Welcome back to the channel, my friends. Do you sometimes feel like you're not good at the game? Well, let me show you something. This is my third Minecraft survival world. I liked it so much that I named it the third. Not very creative, I know. Over the course of 58 hours, I have died a grand total of 13 times. And this isn't including all the times I peaceful pussied out. Needless to say, I do feel like I'm not good at the game. So I spent a good chunk of my time studying, reviewing, and researching as to how a person gets better at Minecraft. And I spent the full day watching Fails on Minecraft. Balls. The man who had a five year hardcore war until he died anticlimactically to a baby zombie. No! After watching his videos, I have finally figured out what it is that hardcore players do that we do not. Now that I am based and red field, no! I present to you a comprehensive video of the things that hardcore players do in their Minecraft world that you, yes you, my friend, should start doing as well if you want to be better at the game. After this video, you'll be so good at the game, you'll be breaking beds outside of Hypixel Bed Wars. You'll be swarmed in pussy. So let's get into it. First tip, don't be a f***ing pussy. You will be playing hardcore mode. You are not virgins. You are not soy jacks. You are not beta cringe zero IQ lip type cut coat L cock goblin do shit eating sky dust minecraft sympathizer. You are a chad. You are based and red failed. If we're gonna play the hardest difficulty in the game, we might as well crank up the settings to the maximum as well. Enable require recipe for crafting. Set sleep percentage to zero. These don't really do much, but it makes the game feel harder and it's all that matters. Set random tick speed to one. Vegetables that grow the slowest are vegetables that taste the best. Unless they're Brussels sprouts. F Brussels sprouts. Set entity cramming to one. We won't be needing the touch of a woman in the game because we will be having women in- <laughs> Won't be needing the touch of a woman in the game because we'll be getting all the women in real life if we play hardcore fish intensity. And as an added plus, we get to kill things just by standing next to them. It's like being a kid all over again. With our world perfectly set, it's time for tip number two. According to Game Rant, a very reputable source, you have to act quickly for the early days. Gather as much resources as you can, moving as quickly as you can from the moment you are spawned into the world. First, we're gonna need wood to make wooden tools. Then we're gonna need stone to replace those shitty wooden tools. Then we're gonna need iron to replace those shitty stone tools. Then we're gonna need diamond to replace those shitty iron tools. Ah shit, we're already halfway through our day and we're not even close to getting all the resources we need. This hardcore run is impossible at our current rate. We're gonna need to speed things up. We need to collect all of these resources. Once we have collected all of these resources, we will make hardcore less impossible to beat. First we trap the villagers, force feed them bread, overpopulate the village, crash the economy through severe inflation and create mass poverty supplying us free labour. This gets us all the potatoes, carrots, bread, beetroot, iron, weapons, tools, armors, and emeralds we need. Then we're gonna go in the nether, hold piglins at gunpoint until they give us fire resistance potions, then tie up loose ends. Then raid the nether fortress with an army of iron golems collecting blaze rods, with the skeleton scouts, magma cream, and the post gold. Next we find the stronghold, defeat the ender dragon, and collect the full inventory of elytras. We also need to collect bones, arrows, spider eye string, prismary shards, prismary crystals, gun powder, tridents, Snow, turtle eggs, carpets, ancient debris, eternals, gems, moon, skulls, chaos, animals, korok seeds. <sighs> and so, we have made perfect use of our first day in this hardcore world. It's not much, but it's enough resources to keep us barely alive for these next few days. With that, we can finally craft a bed and end our first day. Now that we have a better chance of not dying in our hardcore world, we move on to tip number 3, backups. You are only given one life, so it's best to take necessary precautions. I have a netherite sword enchanted with smite 5 as my main, but maybe they aren't undead, so I have one that is enchanted with sharpness 5 as well. But maybe a cave spider survives my sharpness 5 sword, attacks me, poisoning me, leading to a potential death. So I have one with Bane of Arthropods, just in case. But these three swords could break, so I have three duplicate swords with the exact same enchantment as spares. With weapons well prepared, next are consumables. A stack of golden apples and a totem of undying isn't enough. What if we were to fall off a massive cliff into an open cavern leading into a pit of lava next to a deep duck biome surrounded by four wardens and four withers? We're trying to survive here. This is the type of amount that will get you killed five days into your hardcore world. So I'm thinking 64. 100 golden apples. The enchanted kind. 
and with 14 totems of undying. With weapons and consumables filled with backups, there's also armor. I wear full netherite armor with protection for enchantments. But they may break, so I carry a spare, and a spare for my spare, and a spare for my spare spare, and a spare for my spare or my spare spare. Perfect. Now some people will say that we are over-preparing. What do you have to say about that, Filza? <laughs> See, even Filza thinks all of this is necessary. Even after tip 3, we still have further precautions to take. Tip number 4 is to stay away from danger in your hardcore world. There are some fights in hardcore that are practically impossible. Examples of these include... The most important tip and the main tip I'd like you to take away from this video is tip number 5. Have a story. Do not let anyone or any video on the internet tell you how you should play the game. A except my videos, of course. In the words of Filza himself, it just kind of felt like everything you did was a lot more significant and everything you accomplished had more weight to it because you did it all on one life. And it's cool to look back and look at all these cool things that you did on that one life, on the hardest difficulty. Explore and discover different routes to play the game in your own pace. Try new things to make your hardcore run more unique to you. And the perfect way of making this personal and irreplaceable is to create stories and scenarios around this one life you are given. Rather than starting the usual path of raiding a village and confining them in a trading hall for cheap trades, have a hardcore world that takes place in a dystopian universe with a zombie outbreak where you're the lone survivor. Call for help, manage your resources, line up your defenses, set up your fort and cure any zombie villagers you come across. With difficulty locked onto hard, villagers have a 100% conversion rate, so it's up to you to restore humanity and rebuild society. Maybe hardcore doesn't feel challenging enough and feels no different than a normal survival world. Well then have a full one week of no elytra because it's obeying physics week. Or 100 days in hardcore without any armor because you are the protagonist of the story. You already have plot armor. Every misstep could be the end and every mob could spell a permanent death. But surviving through this added challenge makes your hardcore world all the more meaningful now that you have all these near-death experiences to remember. Or maybe you just like the color blue. In that case, you can also set your Minecraft seed in a world that spawns you on a deserted island. Then share the story of what happened in the 100 days you spent over there. Or perhaps you're a tourist in the world of Minecraft, and you just want to taste all the exotic foods that Minecraft has to offer. But with 41 foods in the game, it could be difficult to decide which food to eat first over the other. Perhaps the best sequence to eat them in your hardcore world is to eat them from worst to best. And if you really want to be sure that you're eating them in the right order, then check out this video where I rank all 41 foods in Minecraft from worst to best. You will be surprised to find out that there's a food better than golden apples and golden carrots. 